Hello and welcome uh, to our news, news tonight. Uh, for this particular newscast, uh, we have lots of current affairs to give you in as far as this day is concerned. The 26th day of August 2022. First things first, a look at the headlines. Government to empower youth to advocate for mindset change under the PDM as International Youth Day is marked. Premier Nabanja launches 31 billion Uganda shillings relief fund for landslide affected communities in Bududa. Court sets 29th September to deliver ruling in witness protection application in member case. And 17 Ugandans complete international women's skating technical course. A warm welcome once again, coming to you live from Broadcast House, Nile Avenue. My name is Sandra Kahonde, and I'm joined by Mohamed Mugalu for the sign language interpretation. Thank you for choosing us. Now straight into our details for the day, we're taking a look at uh, activities regarding the head of state. President Yorim Museveni has promised to provide money to the youth for advocacy of parish development model pillar of mindset change at the district and parish levels. The president was officiating the International Youth Day celebrations in Gulu City, Gulu District. Uganda today belatedly commemorated the International Youth Day, which is celebrated every 12th of August. The celebrations were held in Gulu City, a Choli sub-region in northern Uganda, which is faced with the challenge of hunger. While officiating this year's celebrations, President Museveni attributed water scarcity in this area to encroachment on wetlands, which he emphasized must stop. Now, but we are now going to be more organized and more massive. But this means that people must stop encroaching on the wetlands. Because the wetlands are the dero. Maybe the, the, the wetlands are the granary for the water. They are the store of the water. We are going to make a very big uh, campaign start in the coming month to really persuade our people to leave the wetlands so that the water comes back and we use it to irrigate the, 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 the land so that we, we, we immunize ourselves against the, the seasons. He revealed that government is making changes in the industrial sector to introduce pathogenic economy like making vaccines, medicines and producing sanitizers, expanding the industry to also manufacture motor vehicles and computers which youth can tap into to create wealth and jobs. In addition to, add, to, 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 to adding value to all our raw materials, coffee, cotton, fruits, minerals. We shall also introduce the pathogenic economy, the ones of the vaccines and so on, but, and also the knowledge-based economy. I'm glad I saw some people there assembling computers and laptops. I saw them, they were part of the show. We are going not only to assemble, but to make the computers here. but also the, the, the vehicles, the automobiles. We are going to share in that three trillion, we are also going to take part of it. The theme of the day was intergenerational solidarity, the role of the youth in implementation of the parish development model program. Youth leaders requested government to empower them to achieve the mindset pillar under the PDM. We have faced a challenge in this country where when youth groups get some finances, they share the money instead of investing the money. That is not a problem of being young. It's a problem of thinking right. And we want to help your excellency as youth leaders in achieving the pillar of mindset change. We want your excellency to direct RDCs to give part of airtime in the district 
to youth leaders at the district to talk to fellow youth. The Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Beta Mong, assured the youth that the 30% of the 100 million shillings cabinet agreed on for PDM is reserved for the youth and the youth representation on the Parish Development Committee will ensure that this is actualized. The Minister of Gender work hard to make sure that we allocate and lobby for money to support the youth at the district level, to support the youth at the parish level, to monitor and make sure that the youth are represented in the enterprises, but also that the youth are accessing their 30% of the money. But underemployment, unemployment, labor rights, and all those challenges of the generations of the youth today it is you, the youth, to think about the solution to your problems. She, however, challenged the youth to find solutions for their problems as a generation. The UN resident coordinator, Sarah Namondo, urged government to create an ecosystem that encourages entrepreneurship. Others, we look towards the PDM as that vehicle that can really help um, 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 bring through greater jobs, greater protection for young people, and mindset change. I'm Navka Farida, reporting. Thanks, Farida. President Museveni has met members of the Education, Education Policy Review Commission and uh, suggested uh, six areas to be explored for inclusion in the report that will inform the formulation of the new government white paper on education and sports services in the country. The president said the commission should consider how the pre-capitalist and pre-colonial system was and its consequences that led to the colonization of Africa, the production of raw materials in the colonial and post-independence time and the need for change, including manufacturing, expanding of the money economy, as well as service sectors, dealing with new colonial social science, the attack of the African identity, and global exposure, among others. President Museveni thanked the Education and Sports Minister, Honorable Janet Kataha Museveni, for setting up what he termed as the Diagnostic Group. The President advised the 12-member commission, which had come to seek his guidance concerning the review process, to discover how African societies in the pre-colonial era were organized and how they solved their challenges when faced with external forces. The First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, Mrs. Janet Museveni, apologized to the Commission for the stressful environment under which they have been working because of the limited resources. She requested the Minister of Finance to make room for the EPRC in the restricted budget of financial year 2022-2023 to enable them start on the consultation meetings and conclude the project by the new set timelines. I think the diagnosis of the society itself to be able to know what solutions education has for that society, for that society to prosper, society to prosper. In 1400 was really a, 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 a pre a pre capitalist society of France, but by the time you come to 1789, uh, the, the society had uh, had metamorphosed. You remember that process in biology, the one of of, of metamorphosis of the butterfly from the egg to the caterpillar to the pupa, to the mature butterfly. Society also metamorphoses. The problem is here is that ours is not metamorphosis. A peasant is producing another peasant. We are perpetuating underdevelopment. Omunaicharo, kuzaro omunaicharo. The, 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 but if you study European society, you will see that in the last 600 years, those European societies have metamorphosed. While, while we here have, in a way, regressed. This Education Policy Review Commission commenced work on the 7th of May 2021. But unfortunately, the COVID-19 lockdown 
affected their initial plan for work. Therefore, that explains why they are meeting you for the first time slightly over a year since their work began. As I mentioned to you in my letter, the colonial government had established some five commissions of education review in the same period like we have had the Kajuri government white paper, 30 years. Therefore, that is why I think that government must now make room for this commission and allow them to receive the resources to enable them now begin to do the work they have already laid down in their work plan. Today, however, they have not come to you to discuss funding for their work. Mm -hmm. Their desire to meet you was to have an opportunity to receive your counsel mm -hmm. and guidance as the leader of the National Resistance Government. Your Excellency, in the time that we have worked with the Commission, we have registered a number of achievements. But more important, Your Excellency, we've been able to analyze the historical context of education. We have also analyzed the policy history of all the commissions that Mom has been talking about and their purpose and what became of them. We have looked at the legal reforms that have ensued in the country as well as the frameworks. We have looked at the regional, regional, continental, and global perspectives for us to situate our work. Secondly, Your Excellency, we have reviewed the implementation status of the 220 recommendations in the Kajubi, in the white paper as approved by cabinet, and we are able to, to track what has been achieved, what has not been achieved, what are the constraints, and what can be done. More from state, uh, President Irem Seveni has unveiled the Youth uh, Connect uh, Uganda chapter and uh, commissioned the regional ICT infrastructure and e-government uh, services. This was at the International Youth Day celebrations held in Gulu City. At the launch, uh, the penetration advancement in ICTs in Uganda was highlighted among key accelerators to youth employment and social as well as economic growth. His Excellency has launched, has commissioned the regional ICT infrastructure and e-governance services. You know, ICT is a facilitator for development and we cannot do without ICT in all our endeavors. It is important for all people of Uganda to get to know and appreciate the science, technology, and innovation together with ICT, to, together with ICT en enable the acceleration of the entire economy, and, this, and the, this supports the digital transformation and moves towards the digital health, digital agriculture, digital manufacturing, digital cities and others. Digital is introducing brains in systems. Electronics introduce artificial brains into machines. That's really where the... Uh, they have given us instructions to create an environment where young people shall have jobs. We are working very hard to create a BPO environment to process the business process outsourcing where our young people shall continue to be enabled to have jobs both here domestically but also outside this country. We are supporting investors who are developing IT parks. We are engaging organizations and agencies outside Uganda to employ young people even when they are physically in Uganda and many other interventions your excellency today we're happy to launch the regional communication infrastructure project we are launching it to the people of uganda to utilize 
the regional communication infrastructure project came with very simple objectives. There were two objectives, the main objectives. One, lower the cost of internet to enable business and productivity. Two, extend connectivity to the regions. Your Excellency, today we're happy to announce that we have achieved our objectives. President Yuri Museveni has also met and held discussions with the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Good Luck Jonathan, who made a courtesy call on him at State House in Tebe. The president and his guest, who is, in the, who is the chancellor of Cavendish University and was in the country to officiate at the university's second graduation ceremony, discussed issues relating to security in Uganda and Nigeria and Africa in general. On security, President Museveni noted that African governments and leaders should to share experiences, especially when dealing with insecurity and terrorism. His Excellency Jonathan is the university's chancellor, having replaced His Excellency Benjamin Mukapa. Re may he so rest in eternal peace. Now, the former president of Tanzania, who also replaced His Excellency Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, the former president of Zambia. The meeting was also attended by the vice chancellor, Cavendish University, Professor John Mujisha, among others. In more updates of the day, though this is a sad one, a sad one coming through, uh, the remains of the late uh, General Eli Tumwene have uh, been received at Entebbe International Airport. The casket bearing the late Tumwene's body touched down at Entebbe Airport aboard a chartered plane from Nairobi, Kenya. The UPDF top brass led by the Chief of Defense Forces, uh, General Wilson Badi, officially received the body. Now, Paul Bearers, um, composed of uh, Major Generals and Lieutenant Generals, uh, will the body in the waiting UPDF uh, funeral van and were taken to Bombo Military Hospital. We thank you for giving him to us, his family, his friends, this country, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. We thank you for the mercy and grace he received from you and showed among us. Salam, Zabrahim! May his soul rest in eternal peace and he shall forever live in our hearts. In other activities, a Prime Minister 
our Robin Adabaja has launched a cash program worth 31 billion Uganda shillings to be transferred to the communities at risk of landslides in the Elgon region. The cash disaster program is going to benefit communities that are prone to landslides in the districts of Manafwa, Bududa, Namisindwa and Tironko. The money has been provided by Give Directly, a non-government organization in collaboration with the government of Uganda. Inga pilot cash program Prime Minister Robin Anabanja has launched the cash disaster program at Ushika Playground in Hududa district. The cash program worth 31 billion shillings is expected to benefit mainly those communities that are prone to landslides in the districts of Manafa, Hududa, Namisindwa and Sironko. Addition to government efforts to relocate households that have been identified as most at risk to disasters in this region. During the launch, Premier Nabanja called for transparency during the implementation of this program. We shall monitor this program. And therefore, I will ask my team, the Prime Minister's monitoring team, the Prime Minister's delivery unit, let me request my fellow members of Parliament, you, the chairman of the districts, please own this program. She says that most disasters have also been as a result of human activity, hence sounding a serious warning to all those involved in degradation. Nabanja urged the communities in the affected areas to pick interest in the conservation initiatives intended to curb climate change, like tree planting to restore the ecosystem. We all agree that there is need to protect the environment and restore the forest cover on these mountains. According to the State Minister for Disaster Preparedness and Refugees, Esther Nyakun, the project being funded by Give Directly will help landslide affected households to also invest in alternative livelihoods in their locations. Each beneficiary is expected to receive an unconditional grant worth 7 million shillings that will be paid to the recipients through their mobile cash accounts. The project will also be implemented by OPM in partnership with Give Directly. So these households will receive 7 million shillings. That is worth $1,800. Manjia County MP John Baptist Nambesha has asked government to also consider people in the conservation areas so that they can also be resettled. But also we have those that have been for time immemorial now, have been having running battles with Uwa. There are people living along the fringes of Mount Elgo National Park. Those also ought to be given consideration. Since its inception in 2013, Give Directly has delivered over 100,000 households through impactful poverty alleviation and humanitarian programs in selected districts. As Uganda celebrates the Youth Day, State Minister for Animal Husbandry, Bright Ramirama, has cautioned youth to practice moral behavior in both mainstream and social media. Ramirama highlighted this with regret, especially as the country mourns the legendary and exemplary general Eli Tumwene. Touched the lives of so many of our orphans of foreign communities. You know, Tumine was good fearing and he was always associated with Christianity. You know, Tumine was an artist. You know, Tumine was a moral booster. He created several songs in the army. He was also instrumental in designing one of the army uniform UPDF. And most, most importantly, he was a nationalist. He was a symbol of resistance to colonial mentality and he stood what he believed in. I think it is important that at the time we are celebrating the youth day, the youth should be brought on board to understand that the media, the social media should be used for development, should be uh, used to clean and uh, develop uh, competence in, in morals, 
uh, it's regrettable that such utterances have occurred at this time. Now, in the same conversation, the former permanent secretary for Ministry of Energy, Dr. Fred Kabagambe Kalisa, has joined other Ugandans to condole with the family of fallen soldier General Eli Tumwini. Kabagambe, who went to school with the late Tumwini, describes the deceased as a man who knew what he wanted way before he joined the liberation struggle. Kalisa says Uganda will miss the patriotic and pan African attributes that the fallen general possessed. Personally, I knew. Eli Tumwine, uh, first in 1974, when he joined Makere University in Lumumba Hall. Uh, he was in first year, he was in second year. Uh, I remember him as a, a very disciplined, uh, religious, God-fearing person uh, at the time. And he has lived to be that throughout his uh, uh, life career in the military, high ranking, uh, he has held various positions in the government, ministerial positions, I'm a commander, uh, but also when he was the chairman of uh, the, uh, the presidential awards committee, uh, he was very instrumental in uh, recognizing ensuring that government recognizes uh, public servants who have contributed a lot to the development of this country and uh, award them medals. I recollect one time he told me that you people in the oil and gas sector, you are the unsung heroes and therefore you deserve uh, good recognition. Well, possibly that's how I was awarded uh, a medal, a medal of uh, the Distinguished Service Order of the Nile Class 1 in 2012 by the President uh, through uh, the selection process that was uh, headed by General Eli Twin. Uh, therefore, uh, we pray that the Almighty God rests the soul of General Eli Twin uh, in peace. General Eli Tumwene, a soldier and yet an art lover and musician, moonlighting as a fine artist, fashion designer, and most recently, a musician. Tumwene has not only been a supporter of music and art, but equally a composer with a few songs under his name. As the country celebrates the life of General Tumwene, events, promoters, and musicians continue to eulogize him. unfortunate condolence message to the family of General Ed Tumine, to his family, to the UPDF fraternity, to His Excellency the President and all the revolutionaries who participated in the Bush War. General Tumine was the first uh, Bush War hero who made the first shot. He fired the first bullet for this liberation of the government that we praise most, that we are proud of most. So we take him on as a hero. I know during his earthly time, he has annoyed people, he has made others happy, but nobody is perfect on earth. So I ask those who he offended that you forgive him. He had told me he wants to record songs and he was looking forward to participate in some of my concerts. Uh, probably we have missed a tour. Yeah, probably would have, would have proposed a tour to him and we do a tour in Guru, in Nakaseke, in Ruero. This time not as a soldier, but as a musician. So we have missed him as a client. He would have been a very good client who can pull crowds. Yes, so we are missing a man, but hopefully he is in good hands of the Lord. Too much love for music. There's a science of, of that. And the, uh, a nimba, Zizambo Amani, a nimba, Zivezawa Rantu, a nimba, 
it's the kind of expression. So. In other updates of the day, uh, the International War Crimes Division Court has set 29th September 2022 to deliver ruling in an application where state is seeking for witness protection where Omsinga Charles Wesley Mobere and 200 others are facing charges of terrorism, murder and attempted murder. The case is before Justice Alice Komhanji, who is presiding over the pre-trial of this matter. International War Crime Division in Kororo, presided over by Justice Alice Chomuhanji, has resumed with the pre-trial of the case. William Singh of Renzuru Charles Wesley Mumbere and 200 others are facing charges of terrorism, murder, attempted murder among other offences. Prosecution led by Joseph Chomuhendo in the last court sitting filed an application seeking for witness protection. Justice Alice Chomuhanji, while conducting the pre-trial of this matter, set 29th September 2022 to deliver her ruling in this application. Omsinga Charles Wesley Mumbere and other accused persons were not in court were represented by lawyer Masika Alfred who filed two applications in court to grant bail to 49 suspects who are still in prison. Uh, application number 17 and application number 18. 17 is for the women or the only five women who are still in, the, in the prison. It's, it's my view that they should also enjoy their constitutional rights. Uh, we also have the elderly. We also have the sick people. So all those, we have bundled them together. Masika also highlighted to us the ongoing mediation between Renzuru Kingdom, Omsinga Charles Wesley Mumbere, and the state. We did not have to look at the case, but we also have to look at so many other impediments there too. We also have to look at the consequences after the case because our view is that even if the king was convicted, it does not solve the, the problem. But also even if he was acquitted, without solving those problems, we would still be not, ha it would still, the acquittal would still have no impact. So we had to dig into so many things because the, there was evidence of cyclic occurrences and our question was what went wrong why the uprisings all the time of course as we go reconciliation the case does not stall down it has to continue and it has to continue in its real legal process Fembo Chisambide, the former Prime Minister of Renzururu Kingdom, one of the accused in this matter, decried the stringent bail terms against him. I have no home in Kampala. Like I have just said, I have been operated twice, and I don't know what court is thinking actually. I have been appealing and appealing, praying and praying to high court to let me go home like they released the 132 who were released on, on court bail, they are now in Kasese, Bundibujo, Ntoroko. The king and 200 of his subjects are on trial on charges of treason, murder, aggravated rubber and terrorism among others. They were arrested in Kasese in 2016. Although singer Charles Wesley Mumbere is out on bail, he was however ordered not to go beyond the areas of Wachiso. Mokona and Kampala without court permission. Deborah Nama Monde, UBC News. Thanks, Deborah Nama Monde. Now, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament has launched the indoor residue spraying and also rolled out of the IRS intervention in West Nile during the advocacy meeting with members of Parliament from West Nile in Entebbe. The decision to implement indoor residue spraying, IRS, is driven by the high malaria burden in the region in the presence of the good coverage of other effective malaria control interventions, including long-lasting insecticide-treated nets. Yes. 
Despite prioritization of malaria in the country, recent National Malaria Control Division statistics indicate that 10 people die of malaria per day, totaling to 300 people per month. The high malaria epidemic regions include Eastern, Northern and West Nile. It is against this backdrop that the Ministry of Health rolled out the Indo residual spraying in West Nile. The launch was graced by the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Thomas Taebwa, top officials from the Ministry of Health, members of Parliament from West Nile and implementing partners. Health experts noted that out of the 13 districts in West Nile, only nine will be catered for during this phase, citing limitation of funds. With the Minister of Finance and the PSSD, we discuss issues of financing for malaria. If you say you're putting over one trillion in parish development model, but people are dying, yeah? because parish development model is targeting the poor, 39 percent. But those are the same people malaria is targeting. So whereas we are targeting uplifting people out of poverty, you can only uplift people who are healthy, people who, can, who are alive. So the fight against malaria is a fight for survival. Our budget that government of Uganda contributes is about 10% of the $150 million that is required as a country for the fight of malaria. The 90% comes from our good friends, the Global Fund, UK Aid, USID, PMI, and so forth. So we anticipate with time, right, Honorable Speaker, donor fatigue will set in. This $150 million needs to be shouldered by government of Uganda if we are not to be caught off guard. On top of the interventions, the National Strategic Plan targets to have indoor residual spraying conducted in 50 districts to attempt elimination of malaria by 2025, although the current available funding is for 23 districts. Six and uh, the parts of eastern and central, it is costing altogether about $6.7 million. That is uh, about $24 billion. Uh, IRS costs about 1.5 to 2 billion per district averagely per year. It's a very expensive exercise and uh, that is why we want to make sure it is done properly. We achieve coverage, we don't lose the chemicals and we deliver the impact which is needed to malaria. Members of parliament were tasked to advocate for increased funding from government, donors and other organizations to support regular and sustained implementations of indoor residual spraying. My people and to urge government, as the right honorable speaker has said, the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Health to, so that we can increase the budget in the fight against malaria and fight it out of Uganda completely. We the MPs, our role in this activity is largely to mobilize the communities for the general acceptance of this activity. We are there to assure the community that this insecticide, which is going to be used in IRS, is very safe and very effective against malaria. Zahara Abigaba, UBC News. Well, that up update from Zahara Avigava will definitely go for a very short break. When I return, more updates on re regarding uh, national matters of importance in as far as today is concerned. Do stay with us. Fimba! Ni imten kabode super. As you pay mpola mpola for this smartphone, make calls, update your WhatsApp status, watch YouTube, and Google anything under the sun with 2 GB worth of data every month for 7 months. Simply make a small deposit of 99k and pay the balance mpola mpola. You can pay in daily, weekly or even monthly installments while you enjoy your new phone. So what are you doing today? Visit any MTN shop near you and get the MTN cupboard the super easy easy. At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat, exercise profile to adopt and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity and many others. For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on NASA Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor or call. 0758 819 952 or 0778 2.
0208-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja. Oh, uh, Susan, I want to propose to Rose. Eh? Yes, and this time I am serious. Have you guys had sex? Duh, of course. And have you had sex without using condoms? Hey, <laughs> guy, you're curious. I'm more of concerned. Are you having sex with other people? Hey, hello. Uh, is this an interview or what? No, just things you should think about. Uh, do you know Rose's HIV status? Okay. Ah, uh, this is serious. Should I be worried? It is actually serious. Do you know your HIV status? Hmm. Uh, I think I am safe. <clears throat> Many times we get into situations that put us at risk of HIV. However, the first step to ending HIV is getting tested and knowing your results. It's time up HIV. Call 0800-211-046 or text 8080 toll free for more information about how to prevent HIV. This message is brought to you by Ministry of Health with support from USAID. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart Phone network. Cooking with electricity is now affordable. Cook your beans. Ah, avoid smoke. Cooking with electricity is now so affordable with the Fumba Tariff set by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. With the Fumba Tariff, you can now buy up to 70 units of your car at a reduced price of 412 Uganda shillings per unit after consuming your first 80 units of the month. For more information, contact the Electricity Regulatory Authority on 0200 506 000. My name is Nyamgisha Abigail Lilian. I'm a malaria champion. The mosquito transmits a parasite that has caused a lot of harm to us. It is the cause of malaria that has killed many Ugandans and contributed to poverty. I appeal to families to prevent mosquito bites. Close windows early. Spray houses against mosquitoes. Use mosquito repellents. Sleep under long-lasting mosquito nets and prevent mosquito breeding areas around. Together, we can achieve a malaria-free Uganda. This message is brought to you by Minister of Health and National Medical Stores. The Universal Periodic Review is a process under the United Nations Human Rights System which involves the peer review of the human rights records of all United Nations member states every four years. As the coordinating entity, the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda, in partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has organized a two-day stakeholder engagement under the theme, the UPR in Uganda, towards a collective and coordinated action in implementing the UPR recommendations. The chief guest will be the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable General Abubakar J.J. Odong. This will take place on the 30th to the 31st of August, 2022. For more information, contact the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders Uganda on email info at hrdcoalition.ug. Pleasure to have your company. Thanks once again for choosing UBC coming to you live from Broadcast House. Nine more matters of national importance this day. NRM party youths in Luwero district have expressed dismay at the lack of substantive NRM party chairman uh, for Luwero district. This, uh, they say, needs immediate redress if the party is to make gains into the opposition ahead of 2026 general elections. Luwero district was for many years an NRM stronghold with most political positions held by the party. That, however, changed during the last election, a thing that has been blamed on many factors, especially lack of leadership at grassroots level. 
Yeah, at NRM in the world we are hanging. We don't have the top leadership of NRM at the district. This has been highlighted during a meeting at Palace Beach in Busabara Wakiso district, hosted by renowned businessman Sam Buchayan, who eyes Luwero district NRM leadership. My leadership will be a very good leadership. It will be a corrupt-free leadership because I will fight corruption. Corruption is killing Luwero. The youth also met the NRM top leadership at Ploch 10 Chadondo with promises to address their issues. Government has assured born-again pastors that its agenda is to regulate their operations and has no intention of banning places of worship like it's been rumored. This was confirmed by the Deputy IGP Major General Joffrey, Joffrey Tumusime Kasagazi in a meeting with Kampala Best Pastors. The meeting aimed at finding ways to curb environmental degradation and noise pollution. Recently, Kampala Capital City Authority warned the entertainment business that constitutes of bar owners, nightclubs and casino operators, and places of worship against causing unnecessary sound that leads to noise pollution. According to World Health Organization, noise above 65 decibels is regarded as noise pollution, and it gets more harmful when it exceeds 75 decibels. This unwanted and disturbing sound in the environment prompted the Kampala Capital City Authority and other concerned parties to regulate the sound in communities. So noise is unaccepted. So, Street preaching around the streets of Kampala have been categorically listed among the noise pollution factors in Uganda. <laughs> And you can know that every day he's right next to you. You can know that his spirit has gone before you. Thus creating a tug of war between environmental law enforcers and pastors, prompting the patron Miracle Center Cathedral Church's Pastor Robert Kayanja to organize a pastor's meeting that was attended by Kampala Best Pastors, the Deputy IGP Major General Geoffrey Tomusime Kasigazi, among others, to forge ways on protecting the environment as they carry out their vocation and pastoral godly works. And when we read them the law, they say we have bouncers, if you bring the best case, we beat you up. With the ongoing restoration activities of Lubiji Swamp and other water catchment areas around Kampala, by name are backed by other law enforcers to refrain from encroaching on the environment by setting up churches. No. The Head Miracle Center Cathedral Church is also the dialogues organizer. Pastor Robert Kayanja loaded the deputy IGP's dressing of the meeting, saying it will create a collaborative room between the law enforcers and pastors. Mwai Vanjuko, reporting for UBC News. Moving on, Makerere University should invest more energy into solution-driven research in her next 100-year journey if the legacy of the Ivory Tower is to live on. 
Professor Waswa Balonywa, the principal of Makere University Business School, a constituent, a college of the 100-year-old Makere University, cites social economic challenges like poverty and child marriages as major hindrances to societal transformation and that if not handled as soonest, they might plug citizens into a state of destitution. Professor Balonywa was given a keynote address at a public lecture, one of the events at to celebrate Makere University's centenary journey held at the Makere University Business School in Nakawa. The university celebrates her centenary journey. The institution is credited for many developmental projects, with some describing it as a software that is present in every pocket of Uganda's economy and beyond. Whatever it has brought out has been excellent. And uh, that's why we are here celebrating that uh, 100 years of Makere. So we like to look back and say yes, uh, whoever has done a great job in Makerere, thank you so much for making Makerere what it is. Even then, Makerere University has no choice but to take a deep dive into carrying out solution-based researches, especially in areas of socio-economic transformation. Going ahead, our universities, when Makerere has a major role to play in this, must address the issue of poverty in the country. I have alluded to the kind of population control through education, but we must find more means of this. Where is our research in this? Makerere should take a lead in trying to address the issues of poverty in this country. Why do we have more people who are poor? Professor Balunwa also proposed that Makere University upscales her investment into latest technologies before begging for autonomous powers for institutions like Makere University Business School. This country, this government is overregulating everything and this is not good for business. The whatever we collect, when they say they are cutting 40%, they even cut that, what, that what we collect, which is a problem, you know. Uh, we need, uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, so we need your uh, support in this to see that our collections are not cut back. Also present at the public lecture was Engineer Mubarak Ngobia, the chairman, Mobzi Council, who urged government to increase on the number of government-sponsored students to commensurate with those who go through UPE and USE programs. Let it be a policy in that we have at least 10,000 students in the public universities that they have created. On his part, the Vice Chancellor Makere University, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, challenged the youth to be mindful of their decisions, especially while still at school. Korea is now the 11th biggest economy in the world. There are just 50 million people just like us. We were richer than Korea in 1960. How come? The simple answer is discipline and hard work. That's what has transformed. And once we solve that, we can also take off and be just like all the other countries that we admire. The Makere University Business School Public Lecture was held under the theme Leading Change in Business and Management Education in the Region. Dokas Kimono, UBC News. Fimba! As you pay Mpola Mpola for this smartphone, make calls, update your WhatsApp status, watch YouTube, and Google anything under the sun with 2 GB worth of data every month for 7 months. Simply make a small deposit of 99k and pay the balance Mpola Mpola. You can pay in daily, weekly, or even monthly installments while you enjoy your new phone. So what are you doing today? Visit any MTN shop near you and get the MTN Kabode Super Easy Easy. Forget the oohs and the ohs. Forget every moment that stole the show. Because the real show is here on Go TV. It's the new season. It's action-packed. And it's going to be non-stop football. With over 1,000 games from more than seven leagues and cup competitions plus a World Cup, make sure you get the best seat in the house this new football season. Get a Go Coder with one month of Go TV value for only 25,000 Uganda shillings and enjoy non-stop football. Go TV Uganda. Love it. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get Freaky too. 
Zulu. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Did you know it is mandatory to have all births registered and a birth certificate issued? Failure to do so attracts a penalty of imprisonment or a fine. Its proof of age and belonging to parents protects and provides children with legal rights from crimes and abuse like defilement and child labor. Give your children a good future today and have their birth certificates. For more information, visit the NERA office in your area or visit our website www.nera.go.ug. This message is brought to you by NERA. News tonight, it is now on two business updates. A Uganda's informal sector is expanding in South Sudan's capital, Juba. This is despite the numerous challenges that are encountered daily by those who have a dare to venture in Africa's youngest nation. Our reporter, Awari Marion, has more in the following story. 20,000 Ugandans seek employment abroad monthly. However, on numerous occasions, Many Ugandans have appeared at various media platforms seeking help due to mistreatment meted on them by their employers abroad. To address this challenge, the Office of the President has launched a migrant stakeholders run aimed at mending loopholes in the industry. We have a collective responsibility to support and protect our brothers and sisters working abroad because they have a right to just and fair treatment. When they are well and fulfill their contractual duties, Uganda scores well too. All our migrant workers, I assure you that His Excellency the President has not abandoned you and the Office of the President, President alongside all other government and non-government stakeholders will leave no stone unturned to ensure your rights are protected and you are safe wherever you are. The chairman, Uganda Association of External Recruitment Agencies, UAERA, Akantambira Baker, says they are cracking the whip on unauthorized recruitment agencies that are still trafficking people abroad. Those who go to UAE, those who go to Oman, those who go to, to, Qatar, to, to Qatar and they are working as domestic workers, but they went through non-licensed companies. Those are the people who get problems. So we are telling the public that if you want to go, come to the Ministry of Gender, come to UERA, and you go through a licensed company. Then if you get challenges, you have a fallback position where your issues can be addressed. As an association, we have a code of conduct that all our members subscribe to. And in case any of our members are out of that code of conduct, we take it to our regulators, which is the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, and the Ministry of Gender then handles the enforcement in case someone is outside the law. Ugandans have been called upon to appreciate countries from where they seek employment and desist from negative publicity about them. So, our voices added together, we need to amplify this and collect the mistakes in between. We, be, we become part of the solution. Because we are all benefiting directly or indirectly from the industry. Mm. People who would be thieves attacking us are transformed to becoming good workers. Because you see people, some people still, not necessarily because they are meant to be thieves. It's just because they are jobless, they have no money. Money collected from this run will go toward improving reception centers which help reintegrate returnees. Marion Awori and Maria Namkose, UBC News. 
Well, that update had to do with the Office of the President uh, launching the Migrant Stakeholders Run aimed at streamlining the labor externalization industry. Now, in this run, stakeholders and returnees uh, will have a platform to air out their experiences, successes, and the way forward that you just uh, witnessed shortly. Now, we'll get back to our earlier story to do with a business that is uh, looking at Uganda's informal sector expanding in South Sudanese capital, Juba. This is despite of the numerous challenges that I encountered. This is Farm Fresh Foods Market, located in the outskirts of Juba, city in South Sudan. The market is set up and dominated by Ugandan nationals. Despite being a very active business place, the working environment here is not that appealing, especially during rainy season. <laughs> I am the chairman and the mouthpiece of Ugandan business community in Juba. We are doing whatever possible to improve the situation here. There are many problems we are facing without amicable solutions. Most farm produce here is imported directly from Uganda by road through the Nimule Elegu border. However, the business community lament about the non-tariff barriers right from the border to the capital, Juba. They include unsanctioned roadblocks and taxes. Right now, we have issues regarding the importation of eggs from Uganda. Eggs importation is allowed at the border, but when the truck arrives in Juba with the trays of eggs, a tax of about 250,000 Ugandan shillings is levied on the truck. Another concern is unofficial roadblocks on the route. In my recent trip, I encountered eight from Juba to Nimle. There is a dire need for infrastructure improvement not only at this market but also on the main highway that links to Uganda in order to facilitate the movement of cargo and enhance business growth. Despite these challenges, Uganda's business community are appreciative of the opportunities offered by this young economy. When we set up this market, there was no South Sudanese citizen willing to push a wheelbarrow, but now they are trying to. Majority of them prefer the border industry and taxis. Currently, there are over 2,000 Ugandan farmers in South Sudan. I am one of them. For example, commercial growing of tomatoes here is more profitable than importing from Uganda. Soils in South Sudan are fertile. Secondly, there is less tax or no tax at all on tomatoes grown locally. Sometimes we hear that the government of Uganda is setting up funds to rescue some struggling enterprises like the construction sector. The truth of the matter is that by us being here, we are giving government of Uganda much relief. By the way, when you see the revenue statistics of Uganda and South Sudan trade, just know we have the lion's share of the contribution. For instance, out of $490 million announced recently, I am certain our contribution is about $300 million. It is estimated that there are close to 1 million Ugandan citizens living and working in South Sudan, with most of the citizens actively participating in niche sectors such as agriculture, transport, hospitality, industry, marketing, among others. Marion Awori, UBC Business. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart smartphone network at timex nutrition center we advise you on the right foods to eat exercise profile to adopt and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype this empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes blood pressure arthritis ulcers obesity and many others 
For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on NASA Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja. Thanks for staying with us. Now, sports updates. After almost 31 years of championing women bas basketball in Uganda, Hajat Mwajuma Nabawanuka, the manager of Nabisunsa Girls Secondary School Basketball Club, will be retiring from teaching and active basketball management come December this year. She spoke to UBC about her journey, achievements, and future plans. When Hajat Mwajuma Nabawanuka joined Nabisunsa Girls Secondary School in 1985, she had no idea her passion for basketball would make her an icon in championing women in the sport 30 years later. When I joined in Abisunsa, there was no basketball. The major activity which was there, the major sport was volleyball. But I found there Mr. Rukwago the late, and I told him let us start also basketball. So we started basketball here and there. Converted, there were some girls who were very good in basketball. But uh, they were playing netball because that was the sport which was in school. So we converted them with the Red Kukwago. We continued, we played. And uh, uh, when we opened, when we started, it was Chambo, it was Chitante and Navisunsa. We are the only two who started basketball for girls. When we talk about her achievements, the list is endless. We, we represented the country in Kenya, the members to open up the East African games, basketball being one of them. And from schools, we went to, we went to what? To league. We were the first one, we had three only, three teams. We had Nabisunsa, we had the Ladybugs, and the Amazon. I've achieved a hundred percent, right from the top officials up to the down one. I have a representative, which is very, very okay. As we all know, no journey is without challenges, but Nabawanka chooses not to focus on that. As she retires, she's embarking on finding ways to tackle some of these challenges and also contribute to the development of the sport from the grassroots. To try and help and inculcate the basketball issue in those kids to the grassroots level. Eh? And training those primary school teachers, they feel very great. When you train them, you say that I have come, you find the male teachers or female teachers, you tell them there is a group of, of basketballers who are coming from Kampala. They want to train our teachers. We want two of them. They will participate. As she hangs up her gloves, the inspirational sports personality, teacher, mentor, and family woman is not stopping. She's only cutting back. In more sports, a Uganda Skating Federation has climaxed a week-long international skateboarding technical course for women. It was hosted at Country Resort, at Country Resort uh, Buziga and attracted 17 participants. Uganda Olympic Committee President Dr. Donald Rukare has applauded strides by Uganda Skate Federation in its bid to prepare athletes that will partake of the sports pioneering at the Olympics in 2024. Young uh, coaches being taken through coaching, officiating, judging, safety and event management and we believe that this will put the Uganda Skating Federation in a better position to be able to run their sport. We, we encourage them to run the sport in schools and we also encourage the 17 officials who have got this very important knowledge to put it to good use. And we look forward to the, the, the Skating Federation putting forward more athletes to be able to qualify for the Olympics in 2024. This was during closure of a five-day international women in skateboarding technical course at Buziga Country Resort. Uh, this course is really important for women. First of all, we've had experts from the Gender Equality Commission all the way from World Skate, and they are here purposely to empower women and to assure them that they can be in the same positions just as men. It is so wonderful to see a woman be a judge at the World Olympics, and that's why they are here. 
to empower us, to tell us that even women, they can be coaches, they can be judges, they can be trainers, they can be teachers. The course was attended by 17 women, including Faith Emiru, Sharon Nambi and Shakira Nanono. And the National Council of Sports Assistant Secretary General David Katende must be envied by other federations. We really think that uh, with the training of coaches, where we have coaches, Uganda will be able to come up and train future participants and representatives in bigger games, including the Olympics. Now that skating has been admitted as an Olympic sport, we think this is one of the opportunities through which we can be able to fine-tune our participants to represent us in the forthcoming Olympics. It was tutored by high-profile world skate experts, including Natalie Sanchez, whom the local federation believes imparted pertinent skills. In every sport, the technical aspect, the capacity building, is the core foundation of the sport. It was the first ever high-level women's only technical course on the continent. News tonight it is, and now before we let you go, I look at the headlines once again. <music> Government to empower youth to advocate for mindset change under the PDM as International Youth Day is marked. Premier Nabanja launches 31 billion shilling refund for landslide affected communities in Bududa. Court sets 29th September to deliver ruling in witness protection application in Mumbere case. And finally, 17 Ugandans complete international women's skating technical course. That's all we had time for for this particular newscast. Looking forward to having your company uh, during our 10 p.m. edition of News Tonight. My name is Sandra Kahunda and I was joined by Mohamed Mugalu for Sign Language Interpretation. Well, looking forward to having you. That is at 10. Keep watching UBC. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get Freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone. Phone network. Yes, a very good evening to you tuned into UBC TV. We thank you so much for keeping it with us and welcome to this week's edition of UBC One on One with Michael Jordan Lukomwa. Now, this time round, I'm having a special one. We are dedicating it to our brothers and sisters, people living with disabilities, not only here in Uganda but everywhere in the world. Why? Uh, we are 